told the number one fear people have is speaking in public. It's the one fear I don't have. Join me for the Love Speak series, where we leave fear behind and we speak love. Loving our story, loving speaking, doing what we love, loving each other, and loving ourselves. Our stories are what connect us and make us better humans. So join me and my Love Speaks friends for some stories, some laughs, some inspiration, some speaker tips, and some unexpected truth. It's the Love Speaks series where a little bit of love goes a long way. Welcome to the Love Speaks series. Here's your host, Sally Lou Loveman. Oh, today we are speaking soul with my favorite soul cycle instructor, <laughs> Joshua Waddell. There you go. Yeah, thank you. I've been having trouble <laughs> pronouncing his everyone name. Does, everyone I'm does. I'm glad it's, okay. it's not Joshua Waddell. <laughs> it is Joshua Waddell. And I am so excited to have him here in the studio with me at Mystery Street Recording Company. Uh, I am a huge, huge soul cycle fan. Yes, and, you are. Yeah, even though I <laughs> suck on the bike, I am a huge fan. And Joshua's class is literally life changing. I sometimes skip church um, on Sundays just to get some Joshua love. Well, it is called Sunday service. It's, so that's true. <laughs> this is true. And before we get to our juicy, soulful conversation, I want to say that before Soul Cycle, because I'm sure life before Soul Cycle and life after Soul Cycle is how you kind of measure your life. Right. Um, Joshua led a successful career in the hospitality industry, but his lifelong love of music and dance, which he delivers in his class, <laughs> um, as well as his high standard of healthy living, inspired him to audition as an instructor. He was one of 700 participants in a nationwide audition tour. And let's just say Soul Cycle knows how to pick them. He makes me want to get on a bike and add love in quotations. <laughs> Please welcome my new friend who I have successfully inserted into his life, Soul Cycle instructor and Lulu Lemon ambassador, my friend Joshua Waddell. Hi, Hi there. Joshua. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking of my daughter Marin right now, who went to class with me the first time I met you, and she was just like, oh my God, mom. You, I know you, you're going to insert yourself into this man's life and you're not going to let go. I'm like, yep, I love you and I, I want to thank you. Thank you. I feel like it was love at first sight. You it know? was love at first speak. <laughs> I think sometimes you can just look someone in the eyes and, you know, it just feels right. You oh know, it's a connection, God, it's, it's a transfer so, of energy. The energy that you bring, first of all, I write in my book that. This, that if you want to be a better speaker, just go to a Soul Cycle class because the Soul Cycle teacher reminds me of when I did the warm up at the Oprah Winfrey show, engaging the audience as you engage your riders. Mm -hmm. But no one does it like you. No one. I'm sorry. I've been to New York. I've uh -huh. been all over Chicago. <laughs> no one is Joshua. I'm and blushing right now. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you fill my soul with so much love, and I am talking back to you, even though you can't hear me. You can probably see me. I think a lot of us are in your class. Um, what I haven't done on this podcast, which I'm going to start doing now with you, I thought about it. I My, my question is going to be to you, how is love speaking to you today in this moment? But first, so that's your next, just that's coming up. But <laughs> I want to say what I love about you. Okay. Here's what I love about you. Give first of me, all, give me. <laughs> I've known you maybe six months. You are a storyteller. Uh, we speak the same language, so automatically, I love you. You inspire me. I love when you're off the bike. You are hilarious. You have amazing <laughs> choreography. I love how you flip your hair, which you don't have. And I'm bald. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's that imaginary wig. I love Sash. it. I love when you turn your back to your riders and you just put your hands up and you just move those hips. I love when you conduct. That was a new thing you pulled mm -hmm. out the other day. You conduct the riders like we are your instruments. It's conducting energy, baby. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, I love when I learn new things about you, like you were a lacrosse goalie. I can't I get over that. Did I say that one day? You did. Oh, my God. You did. The but things that come out when it, you're putting in serious work, you know, it just comes out of nowhere. It comes out of nowhere because you're a storyteller and you're a soul giver and you're a love speaker. So how is love speaking to you today? Love is uh, speaking to me today 
through other people. I mean, I I strive every day for connection with other human beings and just transferring energy and looking people in the eyes and like feeling what other people are feeling. And I'm blessed to be put in an opportunity where I can really push people beyond their limits every single day. And um, when you see people putting in hard work, you know, you feel the love that they're giving and you feel the struggle and you feel the pride and you feel their strengths and weaknesses. And um, I just, I, I just live for connection. It's beautiful. I didn't have it for so long. Um, okay. So we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Um, I, okay. So I live for connection too. I did that at the Oprah Winfrey show. It's how I was raised. I've had it my whole life. I've never not had it. So what does it feel like when you didn't have it and now you have it? Where does, how did that push yeah. you? Um, I was addicted to drugs and alcohol for about 13 years. And I think that I got so accustomed to not having any type of connection that it just became the norm. Um, I was just used to isolating myself. So, you know, staying mm -hmm. inside mm -hmm. as the day goes by doing what I do. And uh, it was very, very lonely and depressing and, some days it was hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but uh, thankfully I'm three and a half years sober. Mm. And um, I think that's why I just choose to love so hard every single day. It's because I, I lived without it for so long. Mm -hmm. I didn't have it. So it's almost as if I'm making up for lost time. Wow. Um, but I just feel like I have so much love to give. And I think Soul Cycle definitely brings that out of me more. But uh how did Soul Cycle come to you? It came to me out of the Red Eye magazine. <laughs> okay. Walking down the middle of the street. Um, I was at the beginning of my sobriety. Um, I was looking for ways to occupy my time. And I saw a Red Eye magazine, which is a free uh, Chicago-based mm -hmm. uh, magazine that they sell on the side of the streets. No, they don't sell they it. They don't sell it. It's free. <laughs> you know, they right. hand it out. Yeah. Right. Um, and it was a picture of Ryan Lewis. He was a soul cycle instructor in Chicago. He now lives in Philadelphia. And it was about how he overcame his drug and alcohol addiction through soul cycle. So it was that uh, it, it drew me in right wow. away. I read the article. That did not happen by accident. I know. It's just craziness. And one week later I signed up for my soul cycle, my first soul cycle class with him. And uh he talked about sobriety in his class. And uh he got me hooked on ride one. He took me underneath my wing, his wing. Um, I started to hang out with his friends. We went to concerts. It was just kind of like a, a comforting environment for me. He was very much a mentor. And uh, I remember I wrote his schedule. He taught 15 classes a week. And instead of going out and partying, I just made the choice to go to his class whenever he taught. And <laughs> Were you ever in fitness? Like I, well, like I just said, you were a lacrosse goalie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I also know a secret talent is that you're a very good bowler. <laughs> uh, you mentioned that in class once. <laughs> My mom and I were on an adult bowling, or a, a, a mom-son bowling league as a child. And uh, <laughs> we tore it up. I had a Mickey Mouse bowling ball for quite some time. <laughs> Why do I not doubt that? I love uh, that. So um, was fitness... A fitness routine ever in your life? I mean, it doesn't yeah. sound like it might have been, but um, I always liked the idea of being fit and being healthy. But following through with that was an obstacle in itself. I was always overweight as a child. Um, my mom worked like two, three jobs, so she wasn't around a lot, and I ate a lot of fast food. I was always like a good fifty pounds overweight, but yeah. I became like a professional yo-yo dieter. I would stay committed to a diet for like three months, lose weight, and right. then just like fall off the wagon. Right. I think a lot of people can share that same story. I can. I've, you know? I've, lost, an, I've lost 15 pounds wow. four times since I turned 50. I'm 57. So in yeah. seven years, it's it's not a drastic amount of weight, but it's enough where it is a yo-yo. And mm -hmm. it really is the kind of thing where it, when it clicks with you, um, it's beginning to. It, I'm, I'm beginning to be okay with like, okay, I'm not going to be that goal weight but I'm going to be a healthy weight. Right. And I think a lot of it, a lot of it has to do with, um, actually, I'm not drinking, not because mm -hmm. I'm sober, but because of a health issue that has cleared my brain and right. also committed to a workout routine, which I've always been committed to that. That you love. That I love. Uh, and whether it's soul cycle or yoga or whatever it is that I'm doing, mm -hmm. um, that 
makes you want to get back on the bike, so to speak. Well, I think the key to anything is trying to find things that you can be consistent with over a long period of time. I like SoulCycle because it makes my heart happy. I like to dance. I like to sing. And uh, I just look forward to going to SoulCycle every day, even though it's my job. Did you want to be on the stage as a boy, young boy? Always. I... I was in theater in middle school and high school. I was in Little Shop of Horrors. That's my claim oh. to fame. I was Mr. Mushnick. <laughs> Wait, first of all, first of all, I remember when you said that and I was screaming from my bike. Oh my bike God. <laughs> because we are a family that loves Little yeah. Shop of Horrors. My son, Billy, was Seymour in the eighth grade. Okay. I love Mr. Mushnick. I was Mr. Mushnick. And I can see it right now. I can totally see you being Mr. Mushnick. Can you give us a line? Oh my I, guess I, I mean, could... <laughs> suddenly see more. Oh my God, I do not have the voice for that right now. <laughs> but what is one of the lines? See more. I don't think know. about it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, okay, so you were in uh, Little I did, Shop of I did, I did theater as a kid, and uh, I always wanted to be a performer. I liked to dance. I remember taking dance classes as a little kid, and this was in the early 90s. I took ballet and tap, and... I remember getting made fun of a little bit in elementary school for being a dancer, and right. I that I stopped that right away. And um, unfortunately, in high school, I remember staying after school and watching our high school dance team Genesis practice, and I would always like memorize the choreography and watch them. And I became their friends. And uh, one day during our lunch break, they called me out in the middle of the quad with them. Was it female only, or was it, it was co-ed? female only? Oh. They weren't opposed to making it co-ed, but they needed to find a guy that could actually, like, yes. do really Keep good up. ballet. You right. know what I'm saying? If right. you're going to be the only guy on the team, you got to stand out you and got, shine. Right, right, right. I oh, look, he, f- he just flipped his hair, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I did. So I I learned the routine, and they let me join them in the quad one day, and we I did the dance with them right front row center <sighs> in the quad in front of the whole school, and... I think that was like my shining moment in that high school. Is huge. And I then and you, became like the cool, the cool funny kid. The f- cool, <laughs> talented funny kid. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's so beautiful. Yeah. So you wanted to be on a stage and you just figured out how, how well, how can I? I mean, your bike is your stage, it is your platform. Oprah mm-hmm. Winfrey says a quote that's in my book that I can't remember off the top of my head, but basically it's what it, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, that's your talk show. That is your stage. That is your platform. I believe that in my work, and I definitely believe it in yours. That when you are on that Soul Cycle stage, you are performing. Mm-hmm. Have you do you, do you understand the impact that you're having on people's lives? Have people come to you and told them about how they've manifested more in their life? I didn't quite understand the impact being up there would have on people, but. I've been doing it for three and a half years now. And I mean, every single day you get messages from people about how inspired they are to change something in their life or how coming to class has helped them overcome a certain struggle that they might have or an addiction or an eating disorder or going through a a divorce. I mean, it goes on and on. Um, It's just such an honor to be able to stand up there every day and do what I love. And It reminds me that we all have a voice and whether you're on a podium or have a microphone on, it's so important to understand the power of your voice Mm -hmm. and understand that you can use it for something really good. And even though it might not be able to create a massive amount of change that you would like to see, we have the power every single day to use our voice to impact just one person, even if it's just a little bit. And... I think being up there has taught me just to like look people in the eyes, let them be vulnerable and allow them to open up so that you can have a connection so that you can create a little bit of real, genuine change Right. in that moment. In, small, <laughs> in small, impactful ways. And, and I, I love everything you're saying because it, like I said, we speak the same language. I believe that um, when People show up for you, whatever your whoever your audience is, whether it's big or small, they're showing up to hear from you, to see from you, to learn from you, whether it's me speaking or you teaching a mm-hmm. class, that the fact that they've showed up means that they are there to hear from you. Right. And so it doesn't matter if there's 500 people in the room or five people in the room, mm-hmm. the, whatever y- the impact that you can make is the impact that you make, which is real. And so for me, that 
is the most beautiful way to live a life Mm -hmm. because everybody's out there trying to get Insta famous and get it, get it big and get more, get more, get more. Hey, how about we just impact the person in front of our face? Right. Trust me, this job isn't as glamorous as a lot of people think. I think the first year and a half is just like building community and the amount of classes I've taught to two to three to four people is out of this world. But like you have to start somewhere. And if you can make change within those two, three, four people in the room, they're going to tell their friends, they're going to bring their friends. And then before you know it, three, four years later, you have a room full of people, not only just a room full of bodies, but a room full of people that you have established connection that with. are there for the very right. reason that you, because you're teaching. And that's when the real magic happens, when yes. you just have people that you know. Yes. You know, because the connection runs deep. The energy runs deep and you can feel it without saying anything at all. Well, there's nothing like a full room. Okay, we talked about that before we even started the podcast. And and, you know, having worked for a huge brand like Oprah, every time I came out for my role as warm up girl, I had a full house. So and even more than the 300 people in the studio, we did, you know, thousands of people on on shows that when, when when we took that show on the road. And now in my own business, you know, four people might show up or I'm doing comedy now and three people might show up or whatever it may be. But that's where you really have to dig. Right. And you have to go, okay, how am I going to serve these three people in the room just like I would serve thousands of people? Mm -hmm. And so when you can learn that and have that skill, when you're really up there serving it all to thousands of people Mm -hmm. or hundreds of people – that's when the magic really... I feel really... like anyone can shine in front of a, a full room of people. Yeah, right? anyone can. It takes right. a strong, confident, disciplined, young person to really kill it in a group in of, three of three people. <laughs> and really, like, wow them. You so know, true. it's hard. I'm telling you, I have a little fear of performance in front of a small crowd. And that yeah. is why. I, I really do. I love the big... People are scared in, in general to speak. Mm-hmm. And that's why we talk about it. Um so on this podcast, so you do communicate with a lot of people and maybe you don't think of yourself as a speaker, but I think of you as a speaker. What is your secret weapon of connection with people? I think you just have to be really, really honest with yourself. Um, at the beginning of my career with SoulCycle, I think I might have been pretending to be someone I thought that people wanted to see up there Mm. and maybe trying to imitate or copy someone else that I saw was successful in the industry. Right. Instead of like being myself and people are really smart, whether they want to admit it or not, like they can call out a bullshitter. They see one and they feel it. And uh, I started to experience a lot of success when I was just real and honest and raw and spoke exactly what's on my mind And some days it makes sense and some days it doesn't. And I'm a little goofball and I can be a little crazy, but like I really try to stand behind the things that I say and I put passion and heart behind it and it hasn't led me wrong. So be who you are. That is your gift. Um, Teaching is like riding a bike for you, which really is the is the (laughs) metaphor. You know, it's like you're you're up there. It's like riding a bike for me doing this podcast. It's like riding a bike because I love talking to people. It's just my nature. Um, what was your talent as a young boy? I mean, besides dance and do you know, did, what did you like to play with? What was young Joshua like? I did like? like music. I mean, I played clarinet and bass clarinet. Oh, so you played music. I did for a little bit. <laughs> what was your first <laughs> album that you purchased or your first? My first album was No Doubt Tragic Kingdom okay. with Gwen Stefani. Right, right. My mom actually pulled me out of the fourth grade to take me to a No Doubt concert. Oh, my God. She knew how how much I loved Gwen Stefani. It was amazing. She wouldn't let me go in the mosh pit, but she was like, (laughs) I know that you love her and I just want to make you happy. And she pulled me right out of fourth grade. I love that. It was such a great experience. Always accept invitations from your mother because it makes a great story. It it really does. changes your life. Well, really just accept invitations from anybody. Who loves or likes you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We speak the same language. I finish your sentences. I'm trying to really say yes to a lot of these things. It's key. It's really key to say yes. 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 Not only uh, opens your world up to new things. And the more you don't want to say yes is the reason mm-hmm. why you should say yes. It also is a great 
uh, start to a story. Yes, always brings a, a cool story to tell, like you just mm-hmm. told about Gwen I Stefani. I have the most fun when I do things on the fly. Right. With nothing planned. Right. And you just go with the flow. And you know what else? When you say yes to someone, it means so much to them. It like really it does. Showing up for someone. Exactly. Not just saying yes to yourself, but like, yes, I will go to blah, blah, blah with you. And then you show up and you're excited. Like, I'm it's just so like glad you said are, yes to me. people are expecting you to say no. Right. <laughs> it's like, right. Oh, my God, you're coming. <laughs> right. I was, I, like you, you buzzed the, the podcast door today. I'm like, you are here. Yay. <laughs> you actually are here. Um, do you meditate? Um, I'm not going to lie. I don't. Okay. That's okay. You're you. I mean, You're I, being try, you. I try. I try. I yeah. try to, but my mind wanders so fast. Yeah. It's going 99 miles per hour. Right. But it's a, it's a cue for me that maybe sometimes I do need to take a beat and take a pause and just give myself a little bit of time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially at the beginning of the day. Right. Right. So, Are you exhausted? Like how many classes do you teach a day? Three or four. Oh my gosh. Right now I'm teaching like 16, 17 classes a week. That's a lot. And it's a lot. But also, I think my addictive nature, like I like to stay right. really, really busy. And right. if I wasn't teaching this, I would be complaining that I'm not teaching as much as I am. Right. I like to be on the go, but it is all about finding that balance. Like I'm not physically exhausted, but I'm mentally exhausted at the end of the day because literally I've poured my heart out right. three times. Right. And you got to be careful with this job because if you give too much energy without having anything in your cup, like. Right. You're going to feel dead inside. And it's very, very lonely. Right. How do you fill it up? I fill it up. I like to cross train. I like to like submerge myself in the fitness community because like that connection and working out with other people just makes my heart really, really happy. Right. Right. Um, I love going to the movies. Yeah. I love the movies. Favorite movie. Oh, my God. Shawshank Redemption. Oh, okay. Not currently. Okay. Interesting. Okay. That's go- my son's favorite movie. Really? Billy, yeah. I want to go Shawshank. see The Terminator. It came out last weekend. I bought the new AMC. <laughs> Super random tangent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. AMC has a new movie pass where you buy. Yeah. It's like unlimited movies for twenty four ninety nine, and okay. I just like. So do now it you up. can see everything you want. I see everything. I love it. <laughs> um, how can you help people who are listening, who are really disconnected from their soul? How, what, what can you tell people to do or how can you help guide people uh, to get back in touch with who they are and their soul and listen? I think people are really, really hard on themselves. Like it's okay to be lost sometimes and not know where you're going or not having a game plan. Like it's normal. It's okay. Um, I think every day you just have to refocus, set an intention, really, really small, like a small goal and uh, know that, you know, if you put your heart into it and you keep your heart open and you, you make eye contact with people, like good things will come your way, but you right. can't be closed off to it. I think people just get so upset on them about themselves and, right. you know, they walk with their head down and they don't look people in the eyes and they just go through the motions. Like, honestly, you just have to show up for each and every single day and the day will take you exactly where you need to go. Uh You just have to just trust the process. And I really hate that term, trust the process, because in the moment it sucks. Like, right. I don't want to trust it. I'm not patient. <laughs> like, no, I want it now. Yeah. Well, I would imagine you are not a very patient person. Oh my god, because I'm, I'm the not worst. either. Yeah, I'm the worst. Yeah, you want it, want it, want it, want it, and I want it so, so bad. I'm like so hungry for things. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, what do you, what do you want to do next? Well, I'm in the middle of getting my certified personal training certificate, and I want to, I want to do that. I want to expand in the group fitness world, and you know, take on some, some new things. Every year, I try to set a new goal for myself. The, at the beginning of this year, I wanted to be a, uh, get licensed as a skydiver. So in January, I went to Arizona to get certified to jump out of planes. And uh, I did that for two weeks, 25 oh. jumps in two <gasps> weeks, and I got my A-level license. So now that I can jump anywhere in the world by myself. And this was my first skydiving season. I jump out of Skydive Midwest in Milwaukee. And it was fun just to like submerge myself in a new community with all these new people. And I've made so many connections that I wouldn't have made otherwise. It just opened my eyes up to like a whole new world. Okay, so this is what you're talking about. This is what I want people who are listening to hear because this is what I'm hearing and feeling. First of all, you're brave. And that's huge. You say yes. That's huge. Being brave, doing things outside your comfort zone and saying yes 
is great, but what it really does is it puts you in a community with others. So Soul Cycle is a community. Flying or jumping out of planes is a community. Mm-hmm. Whatever your community, whatever it is that you want to do, has a community that goes along mm-hmm. with it. So yes, jumping out of that airplane is awesome. Yes, a workout on so on, on a Soul Cycle bike is great, but it's the community that's the gift. It's not the actual activity. I think we we begin a new activity for the fun of it, but we realize what we really wanted was that connection with the community exactly. and the people. It's like the people. They're the, they're the prizes. They're the gifts exactly. given to our heart. And exactly. I think it's just so hard to realize that sometimes that... I'm having my own moment because this yeah, me is... Yeah, too. This is like, for me, like I, I wanted to do stand-up comedy. Mm-hmm. I'm doing it. Guess what? I'm obsessed with my new stand-up comedy friends. Mm-hmm. It's a community. Mm-hmm. Obsessed. Love them. And if you really take a step back, it just makes you understand like the, the simple thing about it. It's about a human connection with another human being. Mm-hmm. So like... Even if you're not doing anything crazy, maybe you're just in line at Starbucks exactly. getting a coffee. Hi, how are you? Right. How are you? How's your day? Right. Do you feel? I mean, it doesn't have to be so personal, but like a little conversation. Anything. First of all, the spark. eye contact that you're giving me right now is so good that it reminds me to 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 oh do God, it. It's my I biggest mean, pet peeve because I used I to not love make it. That. But it, I mean, the eyes. I mean, I can have a conversation with you not saying anything with my eyes. Right. Right. You're not hearing it, but I'm I kind of like you a lot. <laughs> You're very sexy. <laughs> very sexy. Um, but yeah, eye contact, nobody does because I we're know. in our phones. That's if I'm the on first a date thing. and you're not looking me in the eyes, bye. Goodbye. See ya. Goodbye. Not How's your it. love life? It's going. Oh I my know. God. I've been, well, <laughs> in the beginning of sobriety, they tell you not to date. I yeah. mean, yeah. and I get it. Like, you need to concentrate on yourself. So I've really been concentrating on myself. And I wasn't really looking for anything in particular. But someone walked into the Soul Cycle one day. And, like, there was obvious chemistry. And uh, I also have a rule that I would never date any of my writers. Right, <laughs> right. Oops. And I was really strong on that for three years. But the first time that I bent that rule is when I actually, like, met someone. I said yes. I said yes to someone you know what i'm saying yeah 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 and wow mind blown like i have i'm all about connection but to have a connection with someone in a romantic way in like more than a friend way i mean it just redefines love for me in a whole nother dimension Right. right and like i felt like i was capable of love before but like now i have like another layer like i'm peeling back another layer of love that i didn't even know existed well that's what happens when you open your heart i know yeah. it's just like it's like this endless supply of love i really truly believe the energy that we put out is what keeps us from finding love so mm-hmm. if we're putting energy out like i will not find love mm-hmm. it's never coming mm-hmm. it's just not so the minute you open that energy field up to hey i'm open for love mm-hmm. then it wa- then love walks in the door just like it did for you and being smitten is like the best feeling in the oh world. like you don't even want to eat i know <laughs> <laughs> i love that feeling oh my God. it's so powerful it really is the, there's nothing more powerful that you just you just feel so energized and alive and like, like even you, the thought of get like excited to get yeah out. just like getting dinner tonight with him i'm yeah. getting dinner he's coming to my class tonight and then oh. we're gonna get dinner and hang out oh. and it's like <laughs> so fun i'm so oh, happy for you god now you're just blushing and <laughs> smiling and every, such a everything nerd. smiling <laughs> yes. everything smiling <laughs> well i'm glad love is speaking to you thank you uh in many ways and uh so i'm gonna ask you to explain to me and those listening what happened when you went to new york city and you were one of 700 participants or uh, people to audition mm-hmm. for Soul Cycle. What is that like? Well, like Soul Cycle, the audition process is so, it's intense. It's a lot. So you have to send in like a bio and things about you, headshots, and then they invite you to an audition. My audition was in Dallas, Texas. And uh, I went, there was like 50 people there. And they do these auditions all around the United States. And uh, they just wanted to get you up there to see how you sound on the mic and see how you ride the bike. And I was probably up there for like 30 seconds. That's and, it. And uh, it was really quick. And they knew it just like that. They say that they don't really need to see you ride. They just want to see your presence on the okay. bike for a moment. They call it like a sparkle. 
A or like sparkle. A, a you sparkle. have it. Yeah. And uh, I guess I sparkled. It was my first time auditioning and I got it. I mean, there was other interviews along the way before I got to that final yes. But I never forget, like, just getting that email saying, congratulations, you've been accepted into the Soul Cycle Instructor <gasps> Training Program. And How cool is that? I was, like, blown away. Yeah. It changed, like, the course of my life. At the time, I was working for RPM Steak downtown. Right. As a professional server and working at a restaurant like that, that's a place where, I mean, servers never leave. Like you make great money. The clientele's great. And I saw myself staying there for quite some time. So um, I got the letter. And then two weeks later, I packed up all my belongings and I moved to New York City. And I lived in Crown Heights, Brooklyn for 10 weeks. Struggle was real. Yes. I got to experience that like nitty gritty lifestyle that I was kind of eager for in a way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like. I'm sure am it I served gonna, you like, well. Am I going to survive? Right. Am I going to make it? <laughs> right. Right. And in training's intense to begin with. I mean, they cut people along the way. And oh, my there's God. There's always it feels like, like these, the voice or, I no, or it idol. Totally, it American totally idol. could be like a, a reality show. Absolutely. I can't believe it's not. And I've in training, I, I, I'm a firm believer that they tear you down a little bit to bring you back up. Right. And they just want to get to this real, raw, authentic side of you. Right. Because... The key to any successful instructor or any person in general is just like to be real and to yeah. be to be honest and to be genuine. And yeah. uh, it take I didn't realize the process it takes to actually get there. Yeah, but it helped me. They didn't and, break you. Yeah, they did. They built you. Yeah, and it helped me be confident with who I am and where I'm going. Right. And even if I'm not confident, just understanding that I'm exactly where I need to be and I'm who I am. For a reason in this moment right. and to just own it it's like own your light right because no one else can shine like you no one no, no one. one that's it that's all we got we got ourselves so when you're off the bike do most soul cycle instructors go off the bike because i love when you're off the bike oh, totally okay well, when you're I, teaching 16 17 yeah you can't be week. on the bike the no. time. but when you're off the bike and and i and i i spend a lot of time in new york because my girls are there and my family's there but i also um uh, consult and work in television there. And so I go to the 19th street, mm-hmm. uh, uh, soul cycle and, uh, Aaron is the teacher there okay. who is, you have to know each other one day. She goes off her bike and she is nuts. So love her, love her, love her. Her hair is, she's like going, going, her hair is <laughs> flying all over the place. She's full dancing. Yeah, I love that part because you are, because as a speaker coach, I always say, leave the podium, leave the stage, be with your team, be with mm-hmm. your audience. And that's what you do as a soul cycle instructor. You come out and you're not checking our dials. You are just out there with us saying you can do it. And you make us want to turn the dial to the right to add. And by the way, I love that you say add love. That doesn't mean um, that. OK, when we turn the dial to the right, it's harder. Okay, right. but you say add love as a way of reminding yourself that it's all good and it's happy and you're going to love yourself more by working harder. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> I love that. I love that um, so much. I talk about that all the time. If you want your audience to work harder for you, include them like just like a soul cycle instructor mm-hmm. does. I started off as a writer and I'll always be a writer. Yeah. So I know the importance of just being down there with the team and yes. like you can shift energy in different yes. ways when you're on the floor. You have no idea. Like you can just like move it. I can't wait waves. for you to read my book because you're literally <laughs> talking my language. Literally, yeah. literally. It's you can shift the energy in the room. And sometimes like I'm shifting it, but what people need to realize is sometimes they're shifting the energy for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's like it's a two-way street. The better people the don't... speaker, no, sorry, the better the audience, the better the speaker. Yeah. The better the writer, the better the teacher. I always ask people to show up. It's really easy. Like you could have a room full of 60 people, but the energy be dead. Mm-hmm. And it's just like no one wants to like participate. Right. But people need to realize they can create whatever type of class that they want. Like if you want to make this fun, like right. you got to put out the energy. Like I can't do it all myself. Right. Well, you immediately call your class a team. You start with how we doing today, which I love because it's so inclusive. My favorite thing is when you say you ask us a question and you're like, okay, the answer is yes or yes. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a choice. (laughs) It's only yes. Yes. um, Which you love. (laughs) Yes. I love, of course, I love the candle, um, the whole candle thing. And actually, the truth is, I always thought that the candle wasn't real. I thought the candle was a fake 
thing. So when you brought me the candle, did you one, smell it? I didn't blow it out because oh, okay. I thought it was fake. <laughs> So I was all people, nervous. I get a lot of people trying to smell the candle. No, <laughs> it's but a, it's real. It's a real flame, right? Yes, it's but real. But the other candles in the room are not real. Right. Okay, got it. So the can't describe what they can't, for those who, if you've never taken a soul cycle class, first of all, you don't have to be a great biker or a great dancer because I am neither one and I do it and I just do it my way. And half the time I feel like I'm going to actually topple over on the bike because I'm pulling on it and I cannot, <laughs> my upper body does not go along with my lower body on the bike. I can't, I can't do choreography. I think it's that impossible. you do just fine though. I think no, you no. do better than you actually think. It's impossible for me. So anyway, I love sexy corners that mm-hmm. I can do. Um, but tell people um, about. I don't know where the candle thing actually got what started. What the candle thing is. Yeah. Yeah. I just like to hand out candles sometimes at the end of class for people that I feel like are working really, really hard. Yeah. I think sometimes it's easy for people to feel defeated in class. Yeah. And I never want anyone, despite the difficulty of a class, to feel like they're not capable of doing it. Right. Um, And I see people and I feel people busting their ass. And it's just kind of like a sign of respect for me. It's like, hey, I see you. Like, even if you're all the way in this back corner, like, I acknowledge you. Yeah. I thank you for your energy and for your light and, like, make a wish. Yeah. Because it's yours. Beautiful? It really is. It's a real boost to people. And I did. They really feel seen. Oh, my God. I don't even, I didn't even realize, like, the power of that candle. I mean, these days I get moms, like, reaching out on my DMs being like, <laughs> you know, my child's had a really rough week. Can she get the candle at your 1045? Oh. <laughs> it's, like, it's become, like... Another I'm level. Telling you, it's the Oprah pre-show warm-up. I'm yeah. telling you, I had moms come to say to me, like, oh, my son said I love you to me in the warm-up because you suggested that everyone turn to the person that they love the most. And that's the stuff that fuels me. And that's mm-hmm. the stuff that is clearly fueling you. And you're making an impact every day. And the fact that you're getting DMs from moms, mm-hmm. that's just so beautiful. Social media as an instructor is a full-time job. It is. It's I a didn't, full-time job. It's like responding to like, I'm talking about 50 texts a day. Just right. whether it's from song request, can, my friends are coming on Saturday. Can we celebrate Tiffany's bridal yeah. shower? Yeah. Whatever it may be. It's your hundredth ride. Yeah. Whatever it is. Whatever I really need is. this ride today. I just had a bad day at work. <sighs> like, can you please play this song? It's just people really do look forward to coming to class. And it reminds me that... I have an opportunity to be the best part of someone's day every day. And I don't take that responsibility lightly. So like if I'm feeling tired or whatever it may be, I always check myself at the door and I'm like, Joshua, snap out of it. Right. It is time to show up. Do you have a mantra that says, you know, anything like, like mine is I'm supposed to be here. Like, I mean, not really. um, Something that a, a voice that talks to you just or just snap out of it. I just like, I I just snap myself out of it. Um, You stir people's souls. That's what you do. And that must be what they saw, the sparkle in New York. You stir people's souls. Um, You've stirred my soul on the bike, um, but you've stirred my soul in a much different way here sitting just intimately in one room, just you, not Mm -hmm. not with the music and the lights and the candles. So you I get have, really shy in one-on-one conversations. Well, too, you're not so. shy, but I, <laughs> but you've stirred my soul. Um, when you are driving to your class mm-hmm. or classes, are you listening to a pump-up song? Like, yeah, Joshua, I'm going to get it today. Sometimes I do. If it's like a new song that just came out that I can't get enough of, I'll play it. But okay, I do like to sit in silence. In a quiet. And you know, you asked me earlier if I meditate. Yeah, I and did. And maybe in my car oh, maybe is my it. meditation because it is complete silence and I'm left to my own thoughts and I think about my day or sometimes oh. it's, I set an intention for class like, you know, just about like holding space or right. whatever it may be for that particular day. But right. th- my car time is my sacred time. And it's a time for me to recharge and refuel for my yeah. next class. Because for the most part, I'm probably on my way to another class. Exactly. And it's always odd when I'm taking someone in my car because it is complete silence. And usually I don't want them to talk. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's so interesting. Uh for so many reasons. So now you've just discovered you do meditate. I do meditate. <laughs> yeah. So now you can answer yes to that. Yes. 
I, I believe my car is my rehearsal space. It's not my meditation space. It's my rehearsal space. So if I'm practicing something, whether it's comedy or a speech or something, I speak it in my car because no one's in there. No one's in, no one's in the car. So I get, I get to do it. I rode downtown once and I just said, I, I want to do a TED talk on healing and thank you and forgiveness. And I just spoke. I recorded it. I put it in my lap. I spoke. It's 17 minutes. And one day, I hope TED Talk will ask me to do it. <laughs> but, you know, you just, it's like use the time when the quiet is there. So either use it for rehearsal or use mm -hmm. it for thought. Use it in your own way. You don't have to just think like, oh, I'm wasting time because I'm driving. Mm -hmm. um, As I get older, I'm more conscious of um, just using time to my advantage. I used to just like to lay and like take naps. And now I'm just like, what can I do next? And, you know, there's always, right. There's always time. And you can still nap and be a good person. Yeah, <laughs> I do nap. Um, I know you give back a lot. Um, you use your platform to give back. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it's definitely something that I, I'm trying to devote more time to, but I mean, I've been sober for three and a half years, and if there is in any way that I can help someone out in need, like, I will always be there for that person. We talked about, like, just showing up for people. Like, I take that very serious. So if someone reaches out to me about a certain problem they might have with, like, substance abuse, I am the first person, like, hey, let's get coffee, let's chat, right. let's just talk it out. Because a lot of times people just need someone to talk to. Yeah. You know, oh, so that they don't feel alone. It's always right, right, right. We all need to know we're not in it alone, for right. sure. And sometimes we just don't like to talk to people for whatever reason, right? We hold we hold that so much so that it becomes um, it becomes pain that mm -hmm. is indescribable because it's held for so long. Mm -hmm. And when you see someone that you know who's not acting like themselves. Mm -hmm. That's your cue as a human. Not well, even just I can a see it to say, too without even knowing how can people. I help you? When I begin class and they start riding the bike, like sometimes you can like not just see it, you can feel like the energy that they're carrying in their shoulders. Yeah. And it's just like relax. Like I'm here for you. You see so much. <laughs> God, it's amazing what these eyes can see. You know? It's not what our eyes can see, it's what our hearts can feel. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what the soul part is. It's all soulful. Is your family soulful? Is your mom soulful? My mom, my mom's a single parent. She lives in St. Thomas right now. When I got into soul cycle training, she wanted to live on this little cottage on the beach in St. Thomas and she's living her best life. Oh, I want to visit her. Do she, you visit her? She um I've been a couple times. Um she's coming for Thanksgiving actually. Um but she Do you have a was, dad? Uh I've never met my father actually. Oh. Yeah. But my mom has showed me so much love as a child. I mean, as her only child and as a single parent, like she spoiled me and she yeah. just showed me so much love at an early age. And I Do just you have like, siblings. I'm the only child. So you're, yeah, okay. it's just so honestly, it's my and mom, mom and I. Wow. And I mean, that has created a bond between her and I that, you know, is indescribable. I just love her so very much. And she's always worked three, four jobs to provide for me. And, you know, I just one day want to do well for myself so that, like, I can give back to her because she deserves all of the love yeah. plus, you know? Let's do a quick roundup of uh, before we um, end today because um, – we could we could we could do a twofer. I have a feeling we could talk for another hour. We probably but could. Let's do a let's do a roundup of things that you love because this is the Love Speaks series podcast. The word that you love the most. Fabulous. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> I love that word too. The season that you love the most. Fall. Me too. <laughs> We're two for two. Okay. Holiday you love the most. Valentine's Day. Okay, we're, we're not con <laughs> we're not connected there. Um, okay, song, pump up song, like get on your bike, ride your ass off, and celebrate life and flip your hair. Anything by Britney Spears, like you put toxic on, like I'm gonna just live my best life. Okay, I just love Britney so much. My heart is with her. I love you, Britney. If you're listening, <laughs> take me there. Uh. Oh, I love the Britney fans. It's just so I love it. I love, love, love. Um, uh, a TV series that you're watching? 
I'm a big reality most? TV show junkie, survivor, big brother. Do you watch The Bachelor? I I do and I don't. Okay. I like I like I, I fall in and out of spurts okay. with it. Yeah. Do you watch The Voice? Do you watch I'm, I'm, a, I'm an American Idol kind of guy. Oh, American Idol. Okay. I'm just like a traditional Kelly Clarkson started yeah. it for me Love her. 20 years ago. Right. She's still doing her thing. She sure Carrie is. Carrie Underwood, Fantasia, Jennifer Hudson. Like, yeah. I just believe in the stars that that show has put out and yeah. I will stand behind it yeah. through thick and thin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. You're loyal. <laughs> is that what, how, what do you love the most about yourself? Um... I love that I've been able to overcome some of my darkest days. Like the journey for me has never, it hasn't been easy, you know, and there was a point where I didn't think I was going to make it, but to see where I am now and to see where I was and how much I've changed in just a short amount of time Mm -hmm. gives me hope that like anything and everything is possible. Like, what I've done in three years, I can't imagine where I can go in 10 years if I really put my mind to it. And it's like, you know, whatever it is that you're working on, like you can do it. You just got to put your heart into it and you just got to give it everything you got every single day with no regrets. Or a little bit every day. It doesn't have to be everything every day. It's just something. Just a little momentum. Like I always like to say momentum. Mm -hmm. Um, Where do you see yourself in 10 years? You know, I do love, (laughs) this is crazy. I'm 33. I love children. Yeah. And I I do want to have a family eventually. Yeah. And I see in 10 years, I think that I would be at the point where like, I would want to like have a family. I would be so happy with one child. Right. I grew up without a father. And I think it's important for me to maybe like experience fatherhood at some point. Right. Just because I do have a lot of love to give. And right. I think having a child is one of those experiences like where you have the ability to share anything and everything with another human being and like pass it down. And right. Right. I just want to do that. I hope I hope I hope that I can is do your that too. Future. I really do because <sighs> you have so much to give and you would give the world such a lovely, lovely human to, I still to... want to be in fitness too. Like I love <laughs> fitness to death and yeah. I want to well, do all the things. You. And I think maybe like something in speaking, yeah. you know? Well, you are a storyteller. Here's what I would say to you uh, and anyone listening. If you have a story to tell, you are very powerful. And guess what? We all do. So the story, like for me, when I decided to write a book and tell my story, it's not because my story is any more powerful than anyone else's, but it's mine to tell And I get to tell that. I own that. That's mine. And you own yours and everyone listening owns theirs. If there's a healing piece that one can help you heal or two can help others heal, then your story has just gone to a whole other level. So when we tell our stories, we connect with others and there might be a piece of your story that affects my story and helps me with mine and my own journey and my healing. I've seen this happen so many times. And writing your story is a healing process. So I would say to you, I hope that you decide to do that. And it doesn't have to be a book. It doesn't Mm -hmm. even have to be a blog. It could be for yourself to give your child one day. Yeah. And to give yourself. Yeah. Yeah. What would the title of your story be? Um, (laughs) I gotta help you. Let your light shine. Yeah. Something with light and... I don't know. Yeah. Riding the light, riding the sea. I'm just sitting here a little shook because I feel so happy. (laughs) You're making What does that feel like? You're just making my heart smile. Oh, that's nice. (laughs) It's like good energy. You know, I I will say something. Um I'll share uh and then we'll go. But that feels really good to me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. A girlfriend of mine named Marcy, who I've known thirty five years, um, first person I met, first girlfriend I met in Chicago when I moved here and didn't know anyone. And she visited me last weekend and um, she's a holistic psychotherapist. And my husband and I have gone through a lot of stuff in the last six years, a lot of healing. Uh, And um, she knows us both really well. And she sat down and had a full on therapy session with us. We didn't expect it. She didn't expect it. It just sort of naturally happened on a Sunday. We were having coffee and it was the most incredible thing that has ever happened. And she called me a couple of days later, and she said, how are you feeling? I said, 
I don't know how to say this, but I kind of feel like Christmas morning. And she goes, what do you mean? And I go, I don't know. I feel happy again. And she's like, wow. So I'm not saying that like every day is Christmas to me because that's like a high level, but I return to feeling happy. And when we feel that shift again, because I'm normally a very happy person, Mm -hmm. but when pain comes through, Mm -hmm. it's very hard to find happiness. So when we feel that happiness, that's real. That's speaking to you. That says whatever we're doing in this moment is good. So for me, that moment of really talking about the stuff and really getting through some of the stuff that really hurts makes me in the end happy. Talking about your future Talking about what you want, talking about what you've done, what you've achieved already makes you happy. It's your story. So tell your story. Be happy. I just need to own it, you know? Own it. Joshua Waddell, I think our hour is up. I could just weep. I really enjoy (laughs) you. I hope so much much that I get to continue to, to just bask in your light, in your class. I hope to maybe like one day go out with you. Yeah, we'll definitely go out. I have no doubt in my mind that our paths are going to cross in many different directions. I want to go to Davenport's with you and do like sing along or something like that. We can go shopping. We can do whatever you want. Okay. All right. Well, I am so thrilled that you uh, said yes to me. You are uh, a soul cycle uh, god is what I can say. And I love soul cycle. Uh, they are the the brand is 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 real. It's beautiful. It's about connection and community mm-hmm. and teamwork. Let's just end this with how you end your class. Um, take all that love, take all that energy, take all that good juju. Reach nice and high with it. Clasp it in between your hands. You bring it to your heart center. You go out there and share that magic with the world. There's a bunch of people out there that need it. So uh, go out there, shine your light, and I uh, hope you have a good day. Until next time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. (gasps) Bye. Bye. (laughs) I have loved speaking with you today, and I want to speak with you more. So follow me on all of my social platforms at Live Love Speaks on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you want more stories like the stories we speak here on the Love Speaks series podcast, go to lovespeaks.com and pick up a copy of my new book, Speak. Love your story. Your audience is waiting to step up your speaking game and your human game. Check out my blog while you're there. Sally Lou Loveman is a mom, speaker, author, former audience producer for the Oprah Winfrey Show and founder of Love Speaks. Each week, Sally Lou and her crew have a conversation about how love speaks in their lives and how it can speak in yours. From kindness to composting, no topic is off limits. If you need a community to kickstart your heart, you need the Love Speaks series. Thanks for listening. Your Love Speaks.